So the votes have been counted on last week's Whips, Bits and Chat. What's it going to be? Oh, a lot of rustling. <laughs> the unicorn. Or is it the cat? Which one did you choose? All right, I'm now going to put the a number up on screen here. Yay. Okay, so you've stitched me up. So uh, let's see uh, what the projects are or were. So you want to know what the project is now this is a scrap project okay so it may not get completed it is going to be an aragurumi but this aragurumi has taken its time <laughs> it really is taking its time to grow it is from a the fairy tale crochet collection by rico design if i can find the book review for this one because i know it was in with a group of other books it's one of the really really early ones i will pop that in the link up there um and the design that i am making here he is on front is this dodgy dragon here okay now they've called it george <laughs> mine's called scrap <laughs> scrap the dragon because I am using the old, um, the leftover yarn, sorry, from certain projects. Any project that I have used, the Signet Boho Spirit, that's this one, oh, or the equivalent. I'm going to put it like that, or the equivalent. So that means all of the scrap balls that were from done from George of Chameleon have gone into this. Anything that I've now found clearing out my, when I was moving my craft rooms over, is in this bag here. And that's the leftovers from and that jumper. And the Australian jumper as well, I think. I'm not sure. But anything that looks <laughs> like this, this, that particular yarn, is going into this project. So, so far, I haven't actually opened this project for about a year and a half, easily. <laughs> it was buried right at the bottom. But so far, I've got a body. I've got the head, even with eyeballs. So we know this one's definitely for me. There are two arms. I'm running out of hands. <laughs> two wings. And a tail. And for some reason, there's some random other stuff in the bag that I don't think is meant to be in there. So that's the majority of that. Now, he still needs... Oh, I've actually got to get the pattern and work this one out. What do I still need to make? Legs, I think. I don't know, I don't know. Let's have a night. What have we got? What have we got? What have we got? We've got... Wings are done. Head is done. Nose is done. Body's done. Top of the head bit done I right, yeah I've still got I've got an X by the arms which means I haven't made the arms but then I've got a tick by the legs I might have that wrong I don't know but yeah arms still need done foot pads horns nostrils ears bubbles there's quite a bit left um do I think I will complete it with these four little balls or four and a bit balls? Don't know. 
I'm just gonna make them and hope for the best. Right, um, so if I'm able to, I'm actually gonna record that now and stick it in the video. I might as well. <laughs> okay i'm really having trouble here identifying this is that an arm and a leg or is that two arms or two legs both the patterns seem very similar okay but one does have a tapering which is why i think that might actually be a leg and that might be an arm looks like i'm gonna have to make an arm measure it up and a fingers crossed to work out which one that is as well as trying to work out what crochet hook I used I can either work it out or I can try and search videos from two years ago I don't remember it coming back to a throwback <laughs> doing so so well I was so so chuffed about all the recording and all the editing that I got to up to this point then the realization hit I've already got two arms so time to strip that furry furry yarn and uh, try a leg Okay, so now that yarn's all straight back, it's time to start again and do a leg this time. Actually, do two.
So I'm now on to a day number two of doing the leg. I got back to it, I started recording, I was doing so well, I got to the bottom of the page and then I realised my mistake. I'd written the wrong um, notes as to where I'd got to. And so I'd end up ended up decreasing more than I needed to because I didn't bother counting my stitches before I started to work out what round I was actually on. So there's a whole chunk that I'm not going to bother putting in. I'll just tell you now. I started it again. <laughs> so not completely from the beginning. Just I stripped it back until I got to the right amount of or to a set of stitches where I decreased in the round. So then I could count how many stitches I actually had. I really should leave that little marker that I run backwards and forwards in my work until completely at the end so I could count it up. It would have been so much easier. I'll probably do that on the second leg, but not this one. <laughs> it's the rest of this bit of the video. that legs over I've only got to repeat it again um the reason I say that is because Darth Donut here decided to skim the pattern rather than read the pattern on the last set of rows or that last section that you just saw so I've ended up having to do it twice over at least because it actually asked me to start increasing again it's meant to be decreasing but no I had to increase to then decrease to give me this weird foot shaped section at the end. So finally got it done. Um, there was going to be a bit where I sewed up the end so you could see it definitely finished with thumbs up and everything. But it turned out I'd forgot to stop recording and when I pressed it again, of course I stopped recording. <laughs> so you didn't get that bit. You never know. I might record that last little bit and stick it up in a second, but probably not. Now, um, I've used a massive a chunk of that yarn already that I'd saved and I don't know if I'm going to have enough for the other foot, let alone all the extra bits. I'll keep going and we'll see how far I get. Okay, so at the end of day two, I managed to get one leg done. <laughs> Just one. Um, and now I have a little issue. I'm now working on to a day three of this project in amongst all them other ones that I've got going on. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> but let's see, how much yarn have I got left? I don't know if that's actually going to make another leg because ideally I want it to sort of look similar. So if that's the case, then that's all I've got for a leg. I don't want to feel like disappointment again today. So I'm going to leave the leg for now. Okay, until I, I'm in the mood where I don't feel like I have to strip or leave a section part made. I know, I'm evil like that, but come on. I've had enough stripping on this project already. So I'm going to stick that back. I'm going to shove this yarn back in the possible bag. 
and then with this yarn what can I make now this belt ball is from the leftovers of this jumper so I know it's the same thickness as the dragon this one is my Australian version which is slightly thicker so of course I may have to make slight adjustments like going down a hook size and really screeching at how tight the stitches are so I'm gonna leave this ball for now put that in the in the bag of uh, what's left look how dirty that is um and now I'm gonna work with this one now because this is a mainly greys and whites on this first section I don't know if there's, I can't remember if there's colours in it. If there's colours, I will celebrate and then start the lake. But because it's a black, um, like, greys and whites, I'm actually going to make the little spikes that run down the the back, um, in the black, and then transfer, if needs be, to the white for his horns. I know, a bit boring, isn't it? <laughs> horns that are white. Hmm. Let me think. Uh, most of mine seem to be white. But here we go. Uh, let's see how far I get with this little bowl of squidginess. That's very squidgy. Okay, so as you saw in that quick clip a few moments ago, that's all of the spikes down the back done and his nasal things. So there's two of those as well. Now I did swap back to the original colours so that it would blend in a little bit better with his face. But what I would say is if I was going to make this pattern again, I wouldn't, one, I wouldn't be using this yarn, and two, I would be using the double magic ring to ensure that all of my closes are closed and tight, especially on this section, as you're working in double crochets. So the stuffing, in theory, if you put stuffing in, that could poke through, and that will be an automatic fail when it comes to testing for selling here in the UK. Hmm, pants or what? Um, on to the next bit okay so now I'm onto the horn and it's telling me to make two in one colour and one in another no I'm going to make it all in that hopefully I've got enough there's a couple of different colours in there and this is also the thicker yarn from, Austra from the Australian brand Okay, so now it's on to the ears. Squishy, squishy black, or quite tight squish on the green. I'm going to do the green for the in section, inside if I can, and um, the uh, darker colour on the outside. That's if the pattern lets me. I haven't had a look yet, so I don't know if I'm working flat panel or in the round. If it's in the round, he may end up with two odd ears. <laughs> hey, scrap's going to look very unique at the end of this. Okay, so I'm going to take a rest for a couple of hours on this pattern because the ears are doing my head in. 
this lovely lovely pattern has you bouncing from one row to another so you get halfway down the pattern and it tells you to repeat row four so you're already on row seven or eight and then it goes jump to row four then it goes jump to row two then it goes jump to this jump to that I'm going to rewrite the pattern for me so I can do it a lot quicker because I tell you what two attempts on an ear that's only what oh 17 rows that's that's just daft and ridiculous ridiculous it is ridiculous <laughs> oh. okay so now it's time to check the book make sure i've got all the pieces and we'll go from there okay you can't see the book good right we've got wings first one i were well, these are two wings now they look reasonably matched on one side on the other side no so he's trying to work out one which way i'm meant to make put them and a two well they look like sisters i don't know next up is the head you've seen this one so i know we've done that then we have body arms the legs now these don't match <laughs> we have got a, a blue into a white and we've got a, a grey into greeny blue closest I could get now I've not bothered with the front foot pads on these because um, that was all I had left until I came upstairs found another little bag and found that in it um, I still don't think that that will be enough for the foot pads. I might give it a go uh, once he's made up to see if, if he needs improved. More than likely will do. Horns, nostrils, back spikes. Now, for the ears, I did have an issue. I did show you what I was planning to do. I did speak to you about what I was planning to do or what actually happened. I managed to make two panels that look like this and I was going to place one inside the other of the a darker yarn. When I made the darker one, I ran out of yarn and I only managed to get one. Um, now, this is a quite a nice thickness and I did actually like the way it naturally curled. Now, I did add on this one a, a single crochet around the uh, top section but when I came to single crochet to neaten the edge around this uh, bottom section I actually ran out of yarn about here so I had about five five stitches left so I stripped it back and instead of um, doing the single crochet I actually just slip stitched now so that means that yes it is slightly tidy there is a little bit of a wibble wobble but all pets have a little wibble wobble on their ears don't they so I thought that looked really quite cute. Now I too did still have a two of this panel left. So what I did there was I crocheted them together with a single crochet running along the top edge and then a slip stitch joined the bottom like I'd done on this one. This has meant that I've got quite a nice thick fabric here. And if you look, this one is only a tiny bit smaller just for the one because of course this was a thick yarn it would be the equivalent from going from a, a three weight to a four weight or um, a DK to an Aran and so really I'm doubling up I was doubling up the size with this one so they look okay they sort of look similar as in shape but <laughs> in colours no he's definitely got a mix and match so because he's got mix and match ears and mix and match legs i'm tempted do i do the dark side together or the light side together or do i swap them round because of course if he's got a light side and a dark side i could have a bit of fun couldn't i hmm well you're gonna have to wait and see <laughs> i'm now going to attempt to sew this all together and hope i have enough yarn well i will do because after all that struggling i found this in the bottom of my bag of a bag that um was sitting on my desk
Okay, so there was a, a lot more sewing together and finishing off and de final details. Finally, I finally got him done. It took me another two days to put him together. <laughs> this video has taken so long to make. Because, <laughs> of course, half of it I had to do under the camera. Of course, that doubles up the time. Now, I do apologise that during some of the fast bits, you could see my background and moving down. <laughs> I need to attach that piece of material to the desk because it was it was just travelling further and further down where I was leaning on the edge of the table and rolling it with my elbows. <laughs> so yeah, I know that's an issue and I'm sorry if that distracted you at all from any of the video. Alright, okay, so Scrap, how bad does he look? Um, I'm not overly keen. It's not something that's going to be a given away, sold... Or possibly even displayed. <laughs> yeah, he's that bad. Um, I, I'm not overly keen nowadays on the nursery, what I call the nursery style patterns, which are the oversimplified patterns. I really like a pattern with a challenge, so it keeps my brain engaged. Because if my brain isn't engaged while I'm doing it, I make stupid mistakes. <laughs> yeah, most of mine were made. And stripped back quite a few times now weren't they because I was honest halfway through the video and quarter of the way video I was telling you where I was going wrong as I was going wrong so I can't remember them now but you guys all know now as I said the pattern for this one is from the fairy tale a crochet collection there will be a link in the i button up there to a book review it is by a Rico designs okay um I've also said to you about the uh, bouncing from line to line in the pattern. That does my nutting. <laughs> I'm totally and utterly honest, it does my nutting, but I finally got it done. Okay, and when it came to uh, sewing the components on the description, there was a description, um, but it just said, sew this bit on. So, and would give you a rough direction. Just for instance, sew two horns, two back of head, and one to centre front. They gave no more instruction than that, as in how many stitches you should be going over or how many rounds you should be going up. And it was the same when it came to placing the eyes, I believe. I'm going to have to do a quick reread. Oh no, it does tell you where to place the eyes. So why does mine look like the eyes should be placed a couple of rows further into the pattern? Maybe I put them in the wrong spot. I'll take I'll take the hit on that one. But as I said, there's not a great deal of guidance on this one. It does just tell you to look at the pictures. It wasn't until I finished sewing the whole thing together that I realised that there may have been a little bit of a cheeky guide as to where things were because of the colour changes. So as you can oh, there we go. As you can see on his nose, there's colour change there's a colour change and the eyes sit just above it. So what I think they've done in this pattern is they've used the colour um changes to show you visually or where different things should be done and added. Um, because on the back of the head as well, it does the same. Yeah, I'm kicking the pattern out of the way. Okay, so it does the same. So when you're looking at the pictures, you're like, oh yeah, this is really easy. But um, when it comes to putting it together, it wasn't. Well, it was easy enough. It's just too simplified for me. So you're ready to see scrap. Um, don't get me wrong. I If I ever was asked to make him again he would not be made in this type of yarn this yarn is not uh, suitable for a child um and i would possibly make him only one or two colors okay i, I wouldn't go crazy with colors i would keep it very simple simplified oh long word <laughs> um so yeah i would keep him very simple and i would make sure that he's attached properly now Halfway through putting him together, I really did think that I got the body the wrong way round. I really, really, in my head, I thought the body was the wrong way round. So I did check the pattern again, but it turns out it wasn't. It was just me. Um, 
Now, I know I used the same hook all the way throughout because <laughs> I checked my videos. Um, but no, I know I used the same hook throughout. So why is it that his head is ten times? It feels like it's ten times <laughs> bigger than um, his his body. It just feels like he's got an Arnold Schwarzenegger body with my head stuck on top. There is, um, so to me, he does seem a little bit weird. But here we go. Here is a little close up. I'll oh, get your ears sorted. Um, yeah, here's a little close up of him. Yes, his nose sections are slightly wonky, but they are also slightly wonky in the picture as well. So I did it as the picture said. <laughs> He may be overstuffed, not overly, but um, I like to stuff mine quite tight because, of course, over the years, the fibre feel will shrink down. Um, but mm, I suppose he'll be all right to sit on a shelf, but um, he's not going to be something, as I said, not going to be something that I'm going to give away at all um, because it won't last five minutes. I think if I would ta possibly uh, take the eyes off and um, give him to Liam, but I can see Liam <laughs> turning his nose up, to be honest. Um, now, Liam loves cuddly toys. He's still got a ball that I made him uh, years and years ago. He's um, still got the cake that I made that doesn't look like a cake. Um, and a couple of other bits and pieces where I've made something and it didn't quite look right. So I made sure it was safe and chucked it to the dog. Now... He loves all those and he looks after those, whereas his shop-bought toys, he destroys. Even his soft toys, he destroys. Unless mummy made it. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's get back to him. Would I make this pattern again? Personally, no. I've got nowhere for it to go. Okay, I've got nobody with little ones at the moment that collect dinosaurs and that would this pattern would benefit them. And to be honest, because of the way it is constructed... It's not one that I would feel comfortable giving to a child. I like to have the ends of the arms so that you that they're flatter and um, you actually sew them to the body or sew them into the body as you're crocheting along. You crochet through them. Um, so the same with the leg as well, legs as well. But yeah, that's him. I will attempt to take some photographs and um, put them up for you now. We can have a good old laugh at this because he does look drastically bad. But then please remember, I started this project over two years ago. Okay, over two years ago before I decided that I didn't like this style of um, of Aragurumi toys. But he's done, he's finished and it's now time to move on to the next bag. So, which whip will I be working next? Ooh. Is it the unicorn? Or is it Melbourne? You're just going to have to wait and see. Okay, so the photos will be following in a few moments. I'm now going to say goodbye. See you all soon. And please remember, stay chilled, stay happy and keep crafting. Goodbye, everybody. Photos now.